So welcome everybody. Thanks for uh, coming to this event about uh, SEO. So just to talk uh, briefly about me. So I'm uh, currently working at uh, Naver, which is uh, the Space Green program, the B2C program. I don't know if you're uh, familiar with it, but um, I'm working here on marketing projects. And before I used to work uh, at, on different startups, uh, probably like you guys, and uh, I will lead uh, all the marketing team of a startup uh, called uh, Hector. And uh, in terms of uh, search engine optimization, we had uh, pretty amazing results. And uh, this is why I wanted to share about uh, how to you can improve your search engine optimization. About this workshop, so I really wanted to make something uh, accessible for everybody. So it's really about explaining a clear method methodology, sorry, that uh, can work for you. You can you can implement tomorrow if you like. About giving you the best practical best practices about being as clear as possible. And I will not uh, really go into much details about technical SEO, things really uh, too hard. It's really about discovering a little bit uh, how you can uh, improve your SEO. So just a few words about SEO. SEO basically is uh, when a user is typing a keyword on uh, every search engine, Google, Bing, Yahoo, your main challenge is to go from here to here on the keywords you are interested in. So this is mainly the challenge of all people wanted to improve SEO. Just to differentiate uh, SEO vers versus uh, SEA, SEO is here, so it's all the free position. So when you are here, you are paying Google Ads in this case to uh, rank first on this particular keyword. So you have to pay to be here if you are, uh, for instance, Numa. SEO is about how you can go up there without paying anything to Google. So the pillars of SEO, basically, there are four main pillars. Technical SEO, we will not talk a lot about it uh, today. Links, we'll talk about it, about it a little bit. Content is really important. And there is also all the user engagement and experiencing. So these are really the four different components of a good SEO strategy. So I kind of wondering how to make a good presentation of SEO. And I thought that it was kind of boring ju to just say like, uh, these are the things you should do, these are the things you shouldn't do. So as we are on Halloween, I think that it could be fun to imagine that together with you guys, we are like an online candy store. So imagine that we are all selling candy online. We, are, we have a website, it's Halloween, and uh, we already have a website. So the main question we will try to answer today is what could be our SEO methodology to gain more traffic and to increase our different sales? So, anyone has an idea where to begin? Nobody? Nobody knows? Yeah! <laughs> Use keywords like Halloween and candy <laughs> for the website? Yes, <laughs> exactly. She read the presentation before, so this is why she knows. But the, fir the first step, really important step, is to really identify your keyword. So, I, I'll put two different tools you can use. One is SEMrush, uh, it's, uh, you have to pay to use it, but it's a really an efficient tool. And if you don't want to pay anything, if you want a free tool, there is one particular tool that I really think is good, is Uber Suggest uh, by uh, Neil Patel. And uh, there are like hundreds of thousands of different tools in SEO, so you probably can find different other tools and it's okay, it's not really a matter of tool. It's about how you can do with those tools. And those, different, those two different tools, they are particularly good for this specific step, finding your keyword. So you have two different ways of finding keywords. The first way is to type a keyword to find other related keywords. So what's important about keyword 
is this, this magic formula. What you want your keyword to be is you want them to have a high search volume to, for instance, that people type a lot this keyword in all the search engine. You want them to have low competition, that is to say that the fewer people are competing to this specific keyword, the better. And you also want, if possible, that the trend could grow, the trend to be growing. Um, and of course, there is also like the business relevancy. Like, if we are a candy store, we will not buy like, uh, for instance, a BMW car. It, make, it makes no sense, even if it's a good keyword. So we really have to find um, uh, business relevant keyword. Yeah. What is for you a high search volume? Because yeah, if you are B two B targeting a niche market, yeah, you will have less volume. Exactly. Than a candy store. Yeah. 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 Yeah, true. So what, so what is the, the, the volume that you should look for? Minimum volume. This is actually a very good question. And uh, in fact, the B2B market is uh, a little bit more complicated for SEO strategy because there usually are less uh, volume related to each keyword. But after that, I will maybe answer more to your question. Uh, I'll show you a graph, and maybe we can discuss about it uh, later. But it's a good question. But anyway, the idea, even in a B2B perspective, is to target keyword with a high search volume. Even if it's not the same as B2C, it can lead to, uh, to uh, good results if going well. So. The first way is just, uh, and this is how you can do with uh, this type of uh, keyword, is to type, like for instance, candy. And when I see, uh, when I type candy in here, I will have all the related keywords. This uh, exercise will help me uh, see what's the best keyword for my uh, strategy. The other way is to find your competitors, if you have any. But if you have competitors, it's, uh, it's good to look at them and look at their strategic keywords. SEMrush enables you to do so. And for instance, uh, I looked at uh, Confiserie Forêt, which is the uh, first website to rank for uh, Halloween candy, for instance. And when I saw uh, Confiserie Forêt, I tried to analyze, analyze a bit. And they have kind of a lot, lot of traffic, like 45K is quite interesting. A lot of keywords are positioned. So it's really important for us to see all these keywords, all the keywords that they are using, to try to compete with them on the different keywords, if relevant to our business. So this is approximately the same uh, formula as earlier, high traffic, low competition, you have like a KIDI score, it's like uh, an indicator of competition on SEMrush. And always business relevancy, of course. Is, is, it, sorry, is it based on their, their, the contents that they delivering or on the tags that they're using, or maybe both? Both, okay. both yeah. yeah. And uh, the way SEMrush is working, I'm, I'm, I'm not an expert, but I think that they are kind of crawling uh, all the websites and uh, also detecting like uh, the different uh, type of keyword. And it's, it's an interesting tool because you can do like a huge analysis on different keywords, on the fact that they are disposition for this type of uh, page. For instance, what could be interesting here is that for uh, bonbon, this keyword, you see that the landing page is this one mainly for this type of competitors. So you can also analyze all the landing pages of your competitors to see the difference between yours and see to each keyword what's the difference in terms of content. Is it important to mean that you, you can only have a keyword and look at all the competitors betting on this keyword? Or can you also like target one competitor in particular and understand what keyword they use to use on their website? Yeah, this is the second that I was talking about. Okay. Here, you are just looking at Confiserie Foreign and you are looking at all the different keywords they have ranked. So for instance, the keywords that are, that are ranked among one first position to 10th position, the keywords that are ranked to uh, 20th 
position to 100 position. And this is all the keywords that are ranked uh, for Confusory Foreign in Google. Okay. Is it clear? Yeah? After you did all of this uh, analysis with like, uh, I don't know, uh, 1 to 10 keywords if you're a small business, uh, 100 keywords if there are a lot of products, a lot of possibilities, I advise you to just put all your keywords in an Excel sheet like this and with different indicators. First one is the search volume, so it will be determined by by uh, the different tools you are using. For instance, SEMrush or Uber Suggest will tell you the search volume for every uh, keyword here. Usually you have um, an indicator of keyword difficulty. It will tell you like uh, if it's difficult to rank on this particular keyword or not. For instance, uh, this keyword is really competitive. It's Halloween, of course, it's really competitive. Uh, this keyword is less competitive. Is um, Bonbon. It's kind of surprising, but uh, yeah, apparently yes. So these two indicators, the tool will uh, provide the information. After that, what I advise you is you to determine a score for each keyword about their business relevancy. Is it relevant to your business or not? For instance, pie, it's not relevant to our business. We are we are selling like candies, or we don't we don't have to. Uh, to improve our website on Pi. Uh, bonbon candy, it's really relevant. Uh, lollipops, you said, really relevant, and so on and so on. So we, you, will, you will work on this uh, file to have like all these keywords with all the different indicators. And what you can do is just a basic Excel formula with a little of ponderation uh, according to what you want. It's really depending on you. For instance, I want this to count for 33% of the grade, I want this to count for 33% of the grade, and I want this to count for 34% of the grade, and it gives me a global grade. And after that, I can see which keyword I have to target to prioritize. And usually, what it would look like, it's like this. And here we can talk about uh, What's your name? Corentin. Corentin's uh, question about is it relevant to target, for instance, a low volume uh, keyword? So this graph is really interesting. Uh, anyone has ever heard of the long tail? Uh, yeah, yeah, OK. Uh, I will explain for those who, who haven't heard. So this is pretty simple. The idea is that here you have the keyword with the most uh, traffic. For instance, in our, ex um, in our uh, particular case, it, it would be candy. Candy, a lot of people are competing for candy because there are a lot of uh, people searching online for candy. So all these keywords, they will be here. So you can see that there are few keywords with a high volume. This is like the most difficult part to target this type of keyword. After that, you have the middle. The middle is interesting because you still have a bit of traffic, but there are less competitors and usually it's something that, it's keyword that, that are longer, it's kind of, not expression, but kind of. For instance, when to plant tomatoes, whereas it is tomato plant. Okay, until there it's okay, yeah. Uh, and here you have what we call the long tail. It's all the specific keywords, specific expression that people will type on all search engine. And this should or shouldn't, depends on you, be your priority. Because there isn't a high volume on these keywords, but usually these are the keywords that, that are converting best. So it could be interesting for you to have a strategy where you focus all your efforts on this type of keywords first, after that, this type of keywords, and after that, this type of keywords. It will be like uh, this kind of strategy where you can, do f you can go from the bottom to the top. Um, but you said earlier that we should focus on high search value yeah. keywords. This is why I, I say you should or you shouldn't. It depends on the amount you can 
put into SEO? But it's actually a great question. But if you have a small SEO team, like one person, and, and you don't want to spend a lot of money on SEO, maybe you should focus on this first. Because you won't have a lot of traffic, but it will be really qualified traffic and could be great for you. If you have a lot of ambition for your SEO strategy, Maybe it could be great to focus on this type of keyword, but you have to allocate more resources to this. So this is why I said you should or you shouldn't, because it's really depending on the type of team you have, your maturity, your business. It's kind of complex to say you should do this or you should do that. It's really depending on your situation. So after that, so this is basically the first step. The second step is really to optimize the architecture of your website. This is the part that's going to be a little bit technical and complicated, so don't hesitate if you don't understand what I'm saying. So, you remember our competitor, Confiserie, je sais plus quoi? Uh, their, the structure of their website is this kind of structure. You have the home page. You have the product one, product two, product three, product four, product five, etc., etc. This is this type of structure. And this type of structure is particularly wrong for SEO. Because usually what, what uh, concretely it is, it's like you have uh, their uh, home page. And on their home page, there are all the different uh, products. You click to one of the products, you are redirected here. And all these pages <laughs> you see in the URL, they are linked to the home page. What we should do is something like this. So don't worry, I will explain it. So the idea is to structure your website through what we call cocon semantique. It's in French it's in French because it's actually a French guy who invented the term. The idea, which is quite interesting, is that you should structure your website through different themes, semantic themes that are important for your business. The idea is that usually you have one big page that you want to push. <laughs> In our case, it would be like, for instance, Halloween candy page. In our Halloween candy page, we have all the different type of candy we are selling. And we want this page to rank first or second or third on all the related search of Halloween candy. So this is the main page. After that, you have the different page above, uh, which are usually, uh, for instance, in our, in, in our example, could be the product page. And above them, you have a lot of different pages. The ID is pretty simple. It's just that this one is the one we want to push to the Google results because it's the one that will lead to the most uh, conversions. After that, we have all the different pages that have to be linked semantically to this page. And after that, we can dig deeper to have all the different pages linked to this. So let, let's take a, a concrete example around bicycle. So for instance, imagine that we are uh, <coughs> selling uh, bicycle activities. Here, you have Descent VTT. So uh, is everybody speaks French here or not? No, OK. So it's just like a, a particular keyword around the bicycle. And this is one of the most searched keyword here. So you want to have a page dedicated to this type of keyword. But you know uh, this keyword, uh, Descent VTT, uh, go, go with your VTT, your bicycle. You should back up this keyword with the different theme it can have. For instance, uh, how to do like uh, VTT activities, uh, also all the different types of um, roads to do a um, bicycle. And after that, for each themes, you will also do different pages. But if we, take, if we still take our example, it will be like this. We are a candy store, so there is a home page. Halloween candy, this is the, the page we really want uh, people to go in. We can do the different product we have above, for instance, product one, product two, etc. But what could be interesting is also to 
develop content around big questions the user has. For instance, what types of candy for Halloween? We can make a page around this type of keywords. And also, how to prepare a Halloween. But how to prepare a Halloween is a big theme. So above that, we can do different type of, of pages. For instance, best makeup for Halloween and also best deco tips for Halloween. So all of these, imagine there are pages. And the idea is I have these pages that will talk about these different themes. I have these pages that will go talk to these different th themes. Sorry. And the more you go above, the more you will detail around the keyword you are targeting. So this is basically this type of architecture you want to adopt. And to, be, to link all the different pages, you will use what we call cross-linking. I don't know if somebody heard, yeah, cross-linking. So it's just the fact that on this page, I should have a uh, link to this page, this page, this page, this page. But on this page, I should only have a link to this page, this page, and this page. So this is why it's this type of structure. We have the main page here. And the main page should lead to this page and this page. And here, you have like a separation between the two, where this page links to all of this. Yeah. yeah. I see that all the pages are linked to another. Yeah. Other. Yeah. Um, is that a problem if you have gated content in an in inbound strategy, for example? You, you know that the landing pages yeah. would lead to a white paper, for example. Um, it but with the gate, you just have to enter your email to get white paper and stuff like that. So the pages are not directly linked. Is yeah. That a problem for the SEO? Um, it could be if there, are, there isn't a lot of content on your gateway mm -hmm. page. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll probably advise you to just put your link in a nofollow mode okay. yeah. uh, to just avoid uh, to link the two pages through for Google. Yeah. But for the user, it won't change anything. Yeah, OK. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's a little bit technical, but the idea is uh, to have this kind of structure. Is, is it clear? Is everybody did understand? Yeah. Don't, don't hesitate. If it's not clear, I can. Yeah. So that's why maybe creating a blog on your Yeah, now? exactly. Exactly. This is why usually uh, when you are talking with SEO people, they are kind of uh, uh, not crazy about blog, but they, they like blog because blog usually enables you to do this type of content really easily because you just have to type and to publish and it's kind of good. And usually what you can do is, for instance, here, here you have your product pages. Imagine that how to prepare Halloween, you have a, like a, a, a product on this page. Um, you can link this page through these that could be blog articles, and it could work with your whole strategy. The, the linking part is the most important one, like the fact that this will link to that, and this will link to that. And usually, for the linking part, what is important, it's, it's always top down. Like you always have this page linking to this page, this page linking to this page, etc. And also the contrary. So this page linking to this page, this page linking to etc. etc. And among the same level of pages, you have link between the pages. This is why it's all about semantic field. It, this is what I, it's all about, like the different themes, the different content you are developing, because you are saying to Google here, I'm nailing my subject. That this is my topic. I know exactly what I'm talking about. And I can prove it by this. OK? So after that, uh, we talked about keywords. We talked about architecture. It's about producing your own content. So remember this uh, scheme. When we try to have a like, um, concrete example about it, this page, how to prepare Halloween, could be on this model. Here you have how to prepare Halloween. Here you will have 
best, best makeup for Halloween. So we, you will write a few words about what could be the best makeup, uh, best makeup for Halloween and so on. And you will directly link to this other page that will only deal with best makeup tips for Halloween. Here you have best tips for Halloween, exactly the same. You are written a short paragraph about it and linking to this page in which you'll have all the content talking about the best deco tips for Halloween. Clear? Yeah? Okay. And another important thing is what we call meta title, meta desk. So I, re I will explain a little bit about it. This is what you see on, the, on Google when you are typing, for instance, uh, Halloween candy. You will see different uh, websites with this type of uh, structure. Here you have different elements that you can control by yourself. This is the URL. So the URL is really important. You should put all your keywords, strategic keywords, on it. So for instance, when we say we should do a page about this topic, here, in, the, in this page, the URL should, be, should contain like best tips Halloween. These are the best practice, so no special character. Don't use this type, use this type. So there are different uh, best practices. After that, you have the title. The title is here. It's what you see here when you enter a keyword. Title is also really important. You have to place your strategic keyword on the title, but you, ha you have also to make your title kind of sexy so that people want to click on it. The meta description is this little text. You control, uh, you control it, you can change it if you want. It's not really relevant from an SEO perspective. It doesn't have any impact on your SEO strategy, but it's important from a marketing point of view because it will uh, it will help people click on your link or not. If the text is like uh, you, are th you are thinking, yeah, I want to know more about this, you, you're going to click. So you, you have to work a little bit your meta description. And after that, you will have what we call the HN, which are the different titles of your page. Usually, it's like this. You have one big title on the top of your page, and you have different subtitles. And the big title is called uh, H1, and the different subtitles, depending on the subtitles, it could be H2, H3, and so on. So H1 is really important, and you also must put your strategic keywords in this. And for all the different uh, titles, uh, subtitles above, it's really about not putting necessarily your strategic keywords, but putting keywords that are, tre that are related to the main themes of your page. Usually it's not a big deal because if you are good at copywriting or if you have a good copywriter freelance, it's, it's the natural way of writing. So it's for another um, type of uh, pages, it will look like this. You have your H1 here, the main title. After that, you, are, you have one H2, one H3. Among the H3, there are four H4. H3, H4. So this idea, the idea is really to structure your pages with titles, subtitles, subtitles, and so on and so on. To have like the best uh, way of putting your content together. Is it clear? Any question about it? No. It's, um, we? How do you know like how to how to do that? Like, you know, online product like strangers how to use it? Uh, this usually, um, either you have a development team and they will explain uh, you how to differentiate uh, things and ch change all the different titles. When you are, uh, you are talking about a blog, usually on a blog, for instance, WordPress, you can, uh, when you are on the editing part, when you are selecting your text, you can change it to uh, Title 1, Title 2, Title 3, and Title 1 is H1, Title 2 is H2, Title 3 is H3. So CMS like WordPress, they, they can easily let you do things like that. I understand this, but it's more like, how, like what content should we put in this title and how do you organize that? Ah, it's, 
it will really depend on what type of topic you are dealing with. But the idea is, for instance, um, for for instance, uh, this example, how to prepare Halloween. You can think about like uh, the ideas how to prepare Halloween, and for instance, I came with best makeup for Halloween, best tips, uh, best decoration tips for Halloween. So you can just think about the different types of content that will answer the question of the user that will type this type of uh, keyword. And it's just a matter of, uh, yeah, of writing the content after that and just structuring the whole thing. OK? okay? Uh, I just put here uh, the different uh, best practices in terms of length and so on uh, for the different uh, title URL here, but uh, you can see that uh, later. And uh, just an advice that, that uh, I can give you if you have a little bit of budget. Uh, what I used to do is uh, I, I used to like um, industrialize, industrialize my content production uh, with uh, different uh, freelances. It could be a great way if you want to go faster and to have uh, quick results. So the idea is that you source some freelance that are specialized in copywriting and uh, if they know a little bit about SEO, it's always better. So th there are different sites that can help you do this. Malt, uh, Crème de la Crème, it could be great websites to find them. You select a few freelance, one if you don't have a lot of budget, two or three if you have big ambition for your SEO strategy. You agree on a cost per word. For instance, uh, I can't re really remember, but uh, I used to pay like uh, maybe uh, 50 euros for uh, uh, 400 words, uh, so you just uh, agree with your freelance with this. And the idea is that when you have done all this uh, selection process, you can really industri industrialize your content and produce a lot of content every week that you will integrate to your web website. So the idea is that you will uh, tell the copywriter the main SEO brief, for instance, I want to do a page around like best uh, deco tips uh, for Halloween. He will do all the content writing. It's his or her job, so he will come back to you with uh, the pages that will contain all the different keywords you will tell her or him to put in the pages. And after that, you will just have to integrate the whole things and you can produce a lot of content and integrate a lot of uh, content on your website. So. Usually, it's um, about what we used to pay. It's like um, 1,000 euro per month. So it's approximately 10, 10K to 12K a, a year. And you are sure to have like uh, 13 articles per month, which is really nice because you can integrate like two to three articles per week. And with this type uh, of pace, uh, you can really uh, have a good results, depending on, for, of course, on your keyword, on, on the business and so on. But within like uh, four to six months, you can really uh, see an increase in your traffic curves and in, in your conversions uh, in the end. And the last part is to source different backlinks. So a backlink, it's quite simple. It's just that a website is linking to your website. In the, if in this website, I find a link that is linking to this website, we call it a backlink. And this website has one backlink from this website. So backlink is really, really important. And what you can do also with Themrush is analyze the backlinks of your competitors to find relevant sites to deal with. For instance, uh, this is uh, always a confiserie, can't remember the name. And we can see that uh, they have a lot of backlink, like they have like 8.1k uh, backlink, which is pretty good. And you can see uh, month by month their backlink strategy, the one that they gain and the one that they lost. And it's what's really interesting is to see from which type of websites come from the come their backlinks. For instance, they have all these uh, backlinks coming from this particular website. And you can do this with all the backlinks they have to see all the websites that are pointing on them. And it's really interesting because one, uh, one of the strategies you can do after that 
is contacting all the, these websites and say, hey, uh, I'm doing a, a candy Halloween uh, theme page. Uh, can you put a backlink here on your website that link to my website? So there are different backlink strategies I can advise you to do. The first one is pretty simple, is guest post. Usually it's, you say to a website that is dealing with the theme, uh, the main uh, themes and uh, the related keywords you are dealing with, hey, we are in the same sector, can you make a blog post about me and I'll make a blog post about you. What you should do to do this is to have like another website where you will write your articles about them. Because the way Google sees things is that if you are doing an article on your website, if they are doing an article on their website about you, like it's A to B, B to A, it's not really good for Google. But if you have another website, what you can do is on this website, you are writing an article about them. It's, uh, you are linking to their website. You ask them to write a blog post, but that will not redirect to this site, but to the main site. So here, and here you are just uh, you just need to make a backlink to this website. So it's not A to B, it's A to B, B to C, C to A. Okay, and with this type of strategy, Google Google will not punish you for doing a lot of uh, guest posts. Another different strategy is uh, PR. If you are doing PR, if you have different articles on different medias, it's always good to ask the medias if they could they could put a link to in their articles to your website. Usually, it's kind of difficult, uh, but some agree to do it, and it's really valuable. For instance, if you have a, a backlink coming from. Uh, Le Monde, Le Figaro, even uh, French Web uh, or other tech magazine. It's really nice for your business and I really encourage you to try to do it. And last part is really, uh, you can also buy uh, net linking campaigns that uh, on different websites, I just put a few websites here, but there are a lot of uh, different websites that are doing this. This is the best strategy if you don't have a lot of time and you have a little bit of budget because it will you save you a lot of time. And uh, they will really propose you a um, specific uh, website that are really linked to your business. So uh, I didn't personally test them, but uh, I heard uh, quite good uh, feedbacks about these three websites in particular. Just roughly, how much is the budget you think for this? Uh, it's a good question, but actually it's kind of complicated to answer because it will really depend on the type of website you are targeting. For instance, if you are targeting a website with a high volume traffic, it will cost you a lot more money than if you are just targeting like a, a website with like 3K uh, UV per month. So it really depends on the type of website you are targeting, but I think that there is like all budget here. Like we are talking about maybe 30 euros for one link to 200, 2,000 euros. It really depends on the website. But uh, there are different, um, different uh, budget here, the different prices that are all on this website. So I encourage you to see if uh, you could be interested or not. Other important topics that I didn't talk about, uh, duplicate. So it's important that you don't duplicate your content. All your content should, should be unique. You don't do duplicate content, it's really bad. So don't do it. Uh, this is about all the UX, UI part that I won't talk about here, but that is also really important. Uh, the speed of your website is really important, so try to have uh, the fastest website as possible. Meta tag, we talked about it, like really uh, try to, um, to improve your meta tag, to put your um, strategic keywords in them. Use carefully the internal link. So this is uh, when we talk about the architecture of uh, your website. Uh, try to really think uh, when you are putting a link, when 
or what, uh, in which direction, in which page it should link. This is what we talk about, a bit of the index pages with no added value. If you have pages uh, that are important to you but not uh, for users because they are not really interesting content on it, you can de-index them and it's good for Google because it will not see, it will not see them and uh, all the other pages will uh, be more um, relevant to Google. Don't choose heavy image, correct all the broken links, uh, create a, sac a sitemap and a robot.txt, it's a bit technical, but uh, uh, it's better to have it. This is quite important. Uh, try to use HTTPS on your website. Even if you are not an e-commerce website, it's always better and it's becoming more and more important right now. And what I advise you to do is to set up uh, Google Search Console and Google Analytics to really monitor your different uh, SEO results. Uh, and of course, you can use uh, social me media to boost the traffic on your website. It's always good and it's always a good idea to make that. And be really careful about that your website is mobile friendly. For instance, what's, 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 uh, what could be uh, funny is that if you have a good mobile website, you, can, you could gain a lot of position on mobile when people are searching on mobile compared to your other competitors that do not care about mobile. And mobile is more and more important because, because people are more and more searching on mobile. So don't forget the mo that mobile part and don't be only desktop. Like really think about your mobile website. So SEO can you help you increase the traffic of your website, drive user acquisition and sales, and so on. There are a lot of goals to SEO, but these are the main two. And the different steps that we saw is one, really identify your strategic keyword, to really think about the architecture of your website, try to optimize it, try to really think about it from a user perspective and from Google perspective. Produce your own content, try to produce as regularly as possible and as many pages as possible. And, and last step is really to source uh, the different backlinks. So that's it. Are we good? Yeah? Okay, so uh, thank you very much and uh, I hope you enjoyed the presentation and uh, that you learned uh, stuff. <laughs>